Hello everyone and welcome back to Noia Dev, the series that aims to prove that one developer can create a successful MMORPG. My name is Dane and this week on Noia Dev we're talking about player housing. This has been a long time coming. For those that have been following the series for a while, player housing has been on the to-do list since the very beginning. Problem was, it was at the bottom of the list. So why did it suddenly become a priority? Two reasons, actually. The first reason is because of crafting. In a typical MMORPG, players go to a crafting hall filled with various different stations in order to craft their items. Players grind away endlessly for crafting XP and crafting levels. Crafting in Noia is handled differently. In fact, it's handled a lot more like Terraria. The player crafts crafting stations and then uses said crafting stations to craft bigger and better crafting stations. There's no crafting levels or XP, just crafting materials and crafting stations. And much like Terraria, players in Noia place their crafting stations in their home. So I needed a way for players to have a home to put their stuff. The second reason, and arguably most important, I wanted to code something. The last couple of months has been full of map building and monster design, so I needed a break from all of that and get back to the good old ones and zeros. The biggest issue that I had to solve while developing the player house is how to spawn the items in the house. And I'm gonna talk a little nerd talk here for a moment, but stay with me. Noia uses a code library called Mirror for the communication between the server and the various player clients. Mirror uses something called interest management to determine what clients need to be sent from the server. Players need to be able to see each other if they're within range. Players need to be able to see monsters and NPCs if they're within range. But a player in their house alone does not need to be sent data about other player houses if they're not in that house. And the server honestly doesn't need to see that stuff either. One player spawning 20 house decorations wouldn't crush the server's CPU. But a hundred players all spawning an additional 20 to 50 house objects would definitely cause some problems. So rather than spawning all the house decoration objects on the server and syncing all of that data to the player client, all the housing decorations are just client side. Now hold on, I hear what you're saying. MMO and client side are two things that should never be said in the same sentence. Everything has to be server sided, otherwise hackers will just exploit the game. And you'd be correct. All of the objects are spawned client side only. The server keeps a list of item names and locations that the player has in their home, and the server is what provides that list to the client for what to spawn. When the player interacts with an object in their house, the server verifies that there is such an item at that location in the list. I wasn't sure that just an item name and location would be enough information for the server to accurately know what object the player is interacting with. So when I tried picking up an item for the first time and it worked, well, here's my reaction. <gasps> By only spawning those house items on the client, it saves the server a ton of processing power as it doesn't need to keep track of all of those various network objects every single tick. Now I could go on more about the technical stuff like how every decoration dynamically resizes its polygon collider to fit the sprite mesh, or how I got nav mesh obstacle parameters to save the scriptable objects, or how I have this cool editor script that allows me to create new house decorations from the press of a button, but I won't bore you with any of that. But if you are interested in that sort of stuff, you should join the Discord. Link in the description. Enough with all the technical stuff though, let's see it in action. This building in town is the first house that a player will have the opportunity to own. Most MMOs handle home ownership like it's just another thing that a player can purchase at a shop, and that's kind of boring to me. I want the various houses in Noia to be unlocked through action, not simply purchased with gold. This particular house will be given to the player once they help out the mayor of the town but that quest isn't in the game yet, so enjoy your free house for now. This is the Breezy Warehouse. The name is a 
bit of a throwback to the Breeze home, the first house that player can get in Skyrim. Upon entering the house, players are greeted with a simple UI window that shows total placed objects, toggle button for a decoration mode, and a checkbox for snap to grid. Decoration mode is exactly what you think. It allows players to place and pick up decorations, simple as walking up to them and clicking the button on the pop-up, or pressing the interact button for all of you mobile guys out there. Snap to grid will force all decorations to snap to the center of the nearest tile, if that is your preference. As of now, all objects that are higher on the Y coordinate will overlap anything below them. Certain objects do have collision, like this water barrel here. And my favorite part, you can invite your friends. If two or more players party together and the party leader enters their home, the rest of the party will enter the party leader's home as well. Generally in MMOs, a player can visit any other player's home that they are invited to or are friends with or maybe guildies with whether or not that player is on online or not. That is not how Noya works. In Noya, the homeowner must create a party with the other players that they wish to invite into their home. The reason for this small limitation is because of how the crafting system progression works. It is possible for an end game player to invite a lower level player into their home to use their high tier crafting stations, and I'm okay with this. Even if a low level player managed to craft some high tier end game equipment, they wouldn't have the required stats to equip it right away anyway. And the only thing that this does is just skip the crafting station progression steps. So if a player really, really wants to craft stuff without ever upgrading their own crafting stations, they'll have to party up with a high level player each time. It's a slight inconvenience, but I don't think it's asking too much. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. I, I do want to preface that this system is in no way finished. There are many pieces still in development. I am working on a way to actually have decoration layers so you guys can properly sort objects between background and foreground, not just using Y coordinates, as well as creating style options for the floors and walls. Keep an eye out for that in a future devlog. And that's it for this week. First off, I wanted to say thank you all to your well wishes. Uh, my shoulder surgery went okay. I actually start physical therapy tomorrow. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. Aside from that, over the next couple of weeks, I do want to focus more on the lore, quests, characters, and story of Noya. I have this general outline of a map on Trello right now, but that's all it is, just an outline. So I'm gonna spend some time over the next two weeks to kind of lay down the bones of the lore of Noya. You're gonna see a lot more activity in the lore and character sections on the Discord, so keep an eye out for that. Join the Discord if you want to see it live in action. All that being said, I gotta get back to work, so I'll see you next time. Bye.